We'll uh, give it another minute for people who might still be logging in, but in terms of props for today, getting myself organized, um, always helpful to have a couple of blocks or thick hardcover books. And number two for today, really important, a folding chair or a chair. So look around your house, around your room, and please grab a chair and have this handy. We'll use this a few times throughout the practice today. And uh, if you have access to um, a strap, a belt, a piece of rope, totally optional. Um, there will be a time and space towards the end where you can use that if you choose. Please unfold your mat. And if you have any opening stretches that you wanna take before we begin collectively, now is a good time. I'm gonna give it just another few seconds and then we'll go ahead and begin. Shabbat Shalom, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the, your time zone. Welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. My name is Zach Lasker. Um, I'm both the executive director and our resident yoga instructor. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, if this is your first time in this yoga studio, it's a, a little bit of a um, different experience, if you will. Um, we are going to flow through a yoga sequence. Um, we're gonna take on different asanas, different physical postures, but punctuated along the way, we bring in wisdom of Jewish tradition and yoga tradition. And specifically, we've been dedicating several months since the start of 2021 to the Jewish tradition of Musar. Musar is an idea that each of us embodies or has the ability to embody a range of soul traits. And by working on each of these soul traits, really concentrating on them one at a time, we create a roadway, a path towards ethical behavior with the possibility of maybe being mensches, being really good, kind-hearted, um, ethically driven people. So each week we've been looking at a different soul trait. We've looked at gratitude, we've looked at compassion, equanimity, order, silence, patience, humility, so many different soul traits. And today we've arrived at the soul trait of truth, a word that in Hebrew is emet, and in Sanskrit, it's a very, very important word. Um, the word is satya. So we're gonna be looking at truth, emet, satya through our practice today. To begin, please lie down on your back, bend your knees, start by planting your feet firmly on the ground. So your knees are pointing up towards the ceiling. Let your shoulder blades melt into the mat. Release your spine down into the ground. And then let your knees fall open to opposite sides of the room and press the soles of your feet together. And your legs will be in a kind of diamond shape. And you're in Supta Baddha Konasana. Place one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. As you take your next inhale, feel the rise of your chest, feel the expansion in your hands. And as you exhale, let go not only of your breath, 
but of the distractions that are clouding your mind or creating chatter. Through the practice of yoga, we have the opportunity to try to focus, to see clearly. That's a really common phrase that teachers of yoga use. And if you imagine that your mind is like a lake filled with water, Sometimes that lake can be rippled with waves. There can be darkness as you look down towards the bottom of the lake. And as we enter into this space, a rather holy special space, we're gonna first try to calm the waters of your mind so that they're still and clear. And you can truly claim this time for yourself. Continue to breathe in and out. I want to share with you some words about this idea of truth of Satya from a yoga instructor named Maisan Sidbo, who says Satya, truthfulness, it resides inside of you always. There may be barriers and obstacles in the way for you to hear your truth as we hide behind masks and play our many roles of life. Our yoga opens the doors to listen within so the truth of you can come forth. Take another few cycles of breath. There's so much wonderful talk these days, encouraging people to speak their truth, to live their truth. What does that mean to you? And if you can focus on one barrier, one obstacle, that might be holding you back from your truth. What is it? And despite the virtual reality of our practice together as a community and how spread out we are throughout North America and maybe beyond. Let's start to come into a communal breath. So everyone inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose and a lion's breath, stick your tongue out and exhale out your mouth. <sighs> Draw your knees back together. So your feet are again planted on the ground. And then draw your knees into your chest and rotate your knees clockwise, which in turns allows you to Massage your lower back and release your spine. And then the next time your knees are close into your chest, reverse the direction of your rotation. Rotate your knees counterclockwise.
And then hug your knees back into your chest. Interlace your fingers around your right knee. Extend your left leg forward. Lower your left leg down. Come onto the heel of your left foot. And extend your left leg forward towards the front of the room. And start to wiggle your hips closer to the right edge of your mat. And then using your left hand on your right knee, draw your right knee over to the left side of the room. Coming into an opening twist, extend your right arm out to the right and turn your gaze over to the right. And inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And another exhale. One more time, inhale. And exhale. And bring, bring both knees back up. Hug them into your chest. And second side, interlace your fingers around your left knee, extend your right leg out towards the front of the room, lower your right leg onto the mat, and press the bottom of your right foot forward towards the front of the room as you draw your left knee closer into your chest. And then using your right hand on your left knee, first wiggle your hips slightly over to the left, and then draw your left knee over to the right side of the room. Extend your left arm out to the left. Turn your gaze over to the left. And we're in Supta Matsyandrasana. A reclined twist pose. Two more cycles of breath. And then with your next inhale, knees come back up into your chest and then start to rock forward and back and forward and back building up some momentum until you can push yourself up into a tabletop position. And immediately draw your big toes to touch and shift your hips back onto your heels. Nestle your torso between your thighs. Your arms are out in front of you, but lower your forearms onto the mat and then lower your forehead onto the mat and find yourself in balasana, in child's pose. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. One of the first things that I want to call to our attention as we explore this idea of truth, amet, satya, is that so many scholars, so many sages of both yoga and Judaism point out that truth is multidimensional. Despite our tendency, I want to be really upfront about this, to think of truth as black and white. It is so textured. And one of the prominent scholars of Musar, Alan Morena, says, the Jewish tradition understands that truth is situational, and we ourselves are part of the situation. So as we flow through these poses, these poses which we might have a tendency to think of as true, they're objective, we must come into that pose want us immediately to take a step back and realize that the poses are situational and we are part of the situation. We are part of the pose. We make up the pose and integrated into the pose is where we are in this moment. 
and what our goals are and what our intentions are and our abilities and our limitations. It's gonna be really key to our practice today. So I want you to honor that. As we float through these poses, back off when you need to, be very mindful of the threshold between heat and pain. Heat can be good, pain is not. Take another breath in and out. And then come back into that tabletop position. Wrists directly underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Let's just start to work the spine. Inhale, come into a cow position. Reach your chest and heart forward. Arch your back, lift your tush up. And exhale, round your back, draw your belly into your chest. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Doing that a few times. And part of the situation here is being honest, being truth about, let's say, your knees. If your knees are sensitive, fold your mat or grab a pillow or a blanket and pad your knees to protect them. And with your next exhale, come back into a tabletop position. Keep your right hand planted on the mat. Inhale, reach your left arm up. So open up your chest to the left and then immediately swoop your left arm underneath your chest, underneath your right arm, rest your left shoulder onto the ground, turn your head to the right, and then start to extend your right arm forward, come onto your fingertips. Three cycles of breath. And your hips might be inclined to move to the right. Center your hips to accentuate the twist. Take one more inhale and exhale. And then bring your right hand back in, bend your right elbow, press into your right hand and start to lift your torso back up, come into a tabletop position. And we're gonna take the second side, root your left palm into the ground. Inhale, reach your right arm up, open up to the right, and then immediately swoop your right arm underneath your chest, underneath your left arm. There's a bend in your left elbow as you lower your right shoulder onto the ground. And then start to walk your left arm forward. Come onto your fingertips, your left fingertips. And just like before, be mindful your hips might have a tendency to lean to the left, center them back on the mat to accentuate the twist. Two more cycles of breath. And then start to walk your left fingertips back in, press your left palm into the ground once you have a 90 degree bend in your left elbow, and then push yourself back up, come into tabletop position, and again, bring your big toes to touch, widen your knees, shift your hips back onto your heels, and lower your torso back down between your thighs, forehead on the ground, and you're back in Balasana. Child's pose. Take another couple cycles of breath. There's a beautiful saying in Sanskrit, the language of yoga, 
which translated in English says, the truth is one, but the intelligent one expresses it in many ways. Immediately so similar to the central idea in Judaism of oneness. There's a, brach, a prayer that we recite multiple times a day, exclaiming oneness. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. But the intelligent one expresses this oneness in many ways. And bring your torso up. So we're going to express these poses in multiple ways. I want you to grab your chair, bring it onto your mat. So often in my class, we start, we ease in and build up our practice and often take a couple of seated poses as part of our opening. Today, we're going to express that by sitting in a chair. We're going to be making good use of our props today, part of telling our truth and recognizing where we're at in our body. So we actually did this just the other week. For those of you who were practicing, I want you to lift your right shin up, stack your right ankle on top of your left knee and bring both of your hands, your right hand, excuse me, your left hand onto your left foot, your right hand onto your uh, right knee. And first lift up through your torso, reach up through the crown of your head, and then as you exhale, start to lower your torso towards your right shin. You might stop when you come halfway. You might be able to come further. Depending on how open your hips are, you may even be able to release your hands from your right shin and foot down towards the ground. We're going to take about five cycles of breath opening up the hip. And doing this from the chair brings a little bit more ease into our practice than if we were sitting directly on the ground. And it's contrasted, not only sitting on the ground, often this version of a figure four, we do standing up on one foot. So we're eliminating the challenge of balance. And expressing this pose in yet another way of doing it. Take one more cycle of breath. And however far down you are, start to lift your torso up and remove your right ankle from your left knee, lower your right foot down and second side. Draw your left knee into your chest, stack your left ankle on top of your right knee. Start by having your left hand on your left ankle and your right and your, uh, excuse me, your right hand on your right ankle, your left hand on your left knee. I'm doing it in reverse for you. Inhale, straighten up through your torso and exhale, start to lower your chest down to your left shin. You might stop halfway, you might get further down. And again, if your hips are particularly open, you might be able to lower your hands down towards the ground. a couple more cycles of breath. And then with your next inhale, lift your torso up. And we're going to come into some chair twists. Release your left leg and foot back down towards the ground. You can stay where you are on your chair. I'm just gonna rotate mine so that it's better aligned for your viewpoint. I want you to sit on your chair with your knees off to one side. So your hips are parallel to the back of the chair. 
and inhale, lift your arms up and start to rotate your torso towards the back of the chair and then lower your arms onto the back of your chair. Have a bend in your elbows. Inhale, reaching up through the crown of your head and exhale, deepening the twist over towards the back of your chair. Inhale, lengthen through all four sides of your torso. And as you exhale, rotate your outer ribs towards the back of the chair. Another inhale, lengthening up. Exhale, deepening the twist a bit more. Inhale. And exhale. Speaking of truth, one of the things that I love about using a chair in this version of the twist is that by sitting with your hips aligned with the back of the chair, you're kind of forced to keep your hips centered as you go into the twist. Take one more inhale and exhale and then inhale arms back up and exhale come back to the center and lower your arms down. Second side, swivel around to the other side of the chair. I'm going to switch mine around again so you can stay in view of the camera. So you're just switching over to the other side of your chair. And second side, inhale, arms reach up towards the ceiling. Exhale, rotate your torso towards the back of the chair. And then exhale, lowering your hands down onto the back of the chair with a bend in your elbows. And with each inhale, you're lengthening. And with each exhale, you're rotating. Going incrementally into this twist. Inhale, reaching up through the crown of your head. Exhale, rotating those outer ribs in towards the back of the chair. Take another several cycles of breath. One more inhale and exhale. And then let's start to come out of the pose. Inhale, stay twisted as you reach your arms up. And then exhale, bring your torso back to the center and lower your arms down. Excellent job. Now sit normally on the chair, but scoop your, uh, excuse me, scooch your tush towards the edge of the chair, sit with your feet firmly planted on the ground, hands on top of your knees, palms facing up, lifting up through your torso and the crown of your head, and let your eyes close. And I want to pose a similar question to you that I did at the start of our practice. What is the purpose of your yoga today? What's your intention? And I want to offer one suggestion. Borrowing the words of another great yoga teacher. Yoga is not about posing in some poses but it is about your inner poise. So as you set an intention, what element of mindfulness or inner strength or kindness or compassion are you working towards?
Press your palms together in the center of your chest and let that intention be your guiding truth for the practice today. Inhale. And exhale. Release your hands, stand up. Uh, you can put your chair off to the side. Uh, you can have a candy towards the top of your mat. And standing in Tadasana, in mountain pose, at the top of your mat. Stand with your big toes together, heels a couple of inches apart, arms by your torso, fingertips pointing down towards the ground. Standing in Tadasana, in mountain pose. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. Flatten your back. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. Uttita Hastasana. And exhale, lower your arms down into Tadasana. Again, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms down. We're gonna do that half sun salutation one more time, inhale, Arms sweep up, Uttita Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana as you fold forward. Inhale into Ardha Uttanasana, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, Arms come down. We're going to come into a twist in our Tadasana, but using our blocks or our chair. So you can have your chair towards the top of the mat. Your block could be right in front of your feet. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Lower your left hand onto your chair or onto the block. And then rotate your left ribs over to the right as you reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. A few cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more inhale and exhale, lower your right hand down. Second side, this time press your right hand either into the block or onto the seat of the chair and start to sweep your left arm up towards the ceiling, keeping your hips centered. Many of us need to actually Shift our hips further to the left to accentuate the twist. Take one more cycle of breath. And exhale, lowering the left hand down. Hands on your hips, draw your elbows in towards each other in back of you. And then inhale, lift your torso up and find yourself back in Tadasana. Move your chair away from the top of your mat and the block away. And we're gonna do Surya Namaskar C, Sun Salutation C. Inhale, arms lift up, Uttita Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. 
Exhale, folding forward. Start to bend your knees. Inhale, step your left leg back. Lower your left knee onto the ground. Untuck your left toes. Inhale, reach your torso and arms up. And exhale, lower your hands down. Hands frame your front foot. Tuck your left toes. Lift your left knee up and straighten your left leg. And then step your right leg back into plank position. Honor your troop, which may mean modifying plank, bending your knees and lowering them down. Lower your torso halfway down as you bend your elbows. And then lower your torso all the way onto the ground. Coming into Bhujangasana, low cobra. Elbows hug in towards the to torso. Inhale, lift your torso and heart up. Keep your gaze on the ground. Exhale, lower down. Tuck your toes. Pushing your palms into the mat. Press yourself up either into tabletop or into plank. And then shift your hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Inhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee. Untuck your right toes. Inhale, torso and arms come up into Anjane Asana. And then exhale, lower your hands, frame your front foot. Tuck your right toes, right knee comes up. Step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up into Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. We're gonna start to build on this. Inhale, Uttita Hastasana, arms float up. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, folding forward, have a bend in your knees. Inhale, this time step your right leg back. Lower your right knee onto the ground. Untuck your right toes. Inhale, arms come up, you're in Anjane Asana. Exhale, lower your hands down, hands frame your front foot. Root your right hand into the mat and then sweep your left arm up, coming into a simple twist. And you decide if you want to deepen the intensity of the pose, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, press your right heel back. Take two more cycles of breath. And then with your next exhale, lower your left hand, frame your front foot. If your right knee is on the ground, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your left leg back into plank or modified plank. And then either come directly into downward facing dog, or you can take the vinyasa flowing through low cobra or upward facing dog. And then everyone meeting in downward facing dog. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward. Bend your left knee, lower your left knee on the ground. Untuck your left toes. Inhale, torso and arms come up. Bending into your right knee. Exhale, hands come down. Frame your front foot. Press your left palm into the mat. Sweep your right arm up towards the ceiling, coming into that simple twist. To deepen the intensity of the pose, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, press your left heel back. Really work on straightening that left leg and lifting your left thigh. One more cycle of breath. 
And with your next exhale, lower your right hand, bring your front foot. If your left knee is on the ground, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, and then step your left foot forward to meet your right foot. You're in Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, root into your feet, rise up, arms up. And exhale, arms come down. Stopping for a moment in Tadasana. Take a couple cycles of breath. Inhale, arms come up. It's our last Surya Namaskar C. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees. Inhale, step your right leg back. Lower your right knee onto the ground. Untuck your right toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up. And then exhale, lower your right hand halfway down towards the front of the room. And then reach your left arm up higher towards the ceiling and then rotate it towards the back of the room, twisting over to the left. So your right arm reaches forward, your left arm reaches back. Rotate your right ribs over to the left side of the room. Keep your torso stacked above your hips. One more inhale. And then exhale, left arm comes back up and towards the front of the room. It's parallel with your right arm. Lower your hands down, frame your left foot. Tuck your right toes, right knee lifts up. Flatten your palms, step your left leg back, and you decide to take the vinyasa or meet directly in Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest, step your right foot forward, lower your left knee onto the ground, untuck your left toes, Inhale, torso and arms lift up. Exhale, lower your left arm towards the front of the room. Stop when it's halfway down. Inhale, lengthen up through the right side of your torso and your right arm, and then rotate your right arm towards the back of the room and twist open to the right. So left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back. Rotate your left ribs over to the right and stack your torso directly above your hips. Couple more cycles of breath. Soften your tongue. And then as you inhale, lift your right arm up towards the ceiling, lower it to be parallel with your left arm towards the front of the room, lower your hands, frame your right foot, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back in the plank, and then everyone bend your knees, widen them to either edge of the mat, bring your big toes to touch, and then shift your hips back onto your heels. Release your forearms onto the ground. Release your forehead to the ground. And find yourself back in Balasana, child's pose. So this idea of satya, of truth, in yoga is one of five restraints that are part of the tradition of yoga. The first restraint is ahimsa, is violence. And the second is satya, truth. 
And it's no coincidence that truth comes after nonviolence. So often, the pursuit of our truth can lead to injury. It can actually destroy the world and bring harm to ourselves and those around us. As we express our truth, there's so much empowerment and a sense of exhilaration in being true to ourselves and having clarity of vision and having so many different ways of expressing ourselves. But there's this anchor, this reminder that the expression of our truth should not be at the expense of someone else or in a way that brings harm to ourselves. Take another couple cycles of breath. Such an important reminder as we flow through these poses and as we consider our intention for our practice today, what are the modifications, the, break, the breaks that we need to take? And truth is considered a restraint because sometimes we need to step back. Now start to walk your fingertips forward, lift your forearms up, shift your torso forward briefly into tabletop, tuck your toes, lift your knees up, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, and then walk your hands back towards your feet until you find yourself in Uttanasana in forward fold. Hands on your hips, elbows hug in towards each other. And then inhale, slowly bring your torso up, one vertebra at a time. Keep your gaze down on the ground. Once you're standing up straight, lift your gaze up, look towards the front of the room, release your hands from your hips and find yourself in Tadasana at the back of your mat. And step into the center of your mat, the horizontal way. Step your feet about three to four feet apart. Hands on your hips, Prasarita Padottanasana. And before we do this, actually release your hands from the hips. Have either a block or your chair in front of you. And have your hands back on your hips. We're going to start with Prasarita Padottanasana A. And here I'll demonstrate it with a chair. So hands on your hips. Inhale, torso and chest lift up. Exhale, folding forward. Root strongly into your feet. And then lower your forearms. If you're using your chair, lower your forearms onto the seat of the chair. If you're using a block, you can lower your hands down onto the block and then release the crown of your head down. This is a modified way to come into this wide legged forward fold. And it's a modification like this that honors the blend of ahimsa, of nonviolence, with satya and truth. This is a version of the pose. And more than the physicality of it, remember your intention for this practice. Remember the breath, the letting go, the reducing the chatter, the opening up of your mind. Using a chair or a block, not only does it not get in your way, it might enhance your ability to stay true to your intention. 
One more inhale. And exhale. Hands back on your hips, root into your feet, and inhale, bring your torso up. Great job. Prasarita Padottanasana with a twist. And for this one, it's going to be easier to use your block than the chair. So if you have a block or a book, have that in front of you. Start with your hands on your hips. Inhale, lift your torso up. Exhale, start to fold forward. And then release your right hand onto your block. You can have it on the low height, the medium height, the high height, whatever is best for you. And then rotate your left ribs over to the right. Start to open up your torso, excuse me, Rotate your ribs over to the left, open your torso up to the left side of the room, and then float your left arm up. We're going to be here for several cycles of breath. So rooting evenly into both feet, stacking your left shoulder on top of your right shoulder. And there's a wonderful story teaching in the Talmud that relates to this idea we've been talking about of satya, of truth. And it starts with the joy of a wedding. And two very prominent rabbis are debating what words you offer to a bride on her wedding day. Take another inhale, exhale, lower your left hand onto your left hip, bring your torso back to center, bring your right hand up to your hip, and then inhale, lift your torso up. I'm gonna pause for a couple cycles of breath. And there is a, a requirement that on her wedding day, a bride is to be praised. And two particular scholars, they may be familiar to you, Hillel and Shammai are debating how you offer these words of praise to a bride if and when the bride might be homely or frazzled or you don't care for her dress or her hair is out of place or whatever imperfection you're finding. It's hard to work past that and to offer sincere praise hands on your hips, lift your torso up, start to hinge forward. This time release your left hand onto the block, start to twist your torso open to the right. Once you're twisted open to the right as far as you can go, let your right arm float up towards the ceiling. And Shammai's instructions are that you are to search the bride over and over and over again until you find something authentic to praise. That regardless of your first impression of the bride, you are not released of this responsibility to offer her praise. Your challenge is to find it. And Hillel has a different approach. Hillel basically says, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what imperfection you find. You open your mouth and you tell the bride that she is beautiful and graceful. Take another inhale and exhale. Lower your right hand down onto that block or book, hands on your hips and inhale lift your torso up. And Hillel's explanation is that on, in this moment, on this day, the most important value is to fill it with praise. That is the truth. And Hillel is very mindful 
of the power of words and the power of expression. And just because your truth might be, as you look at this bride, that you're not finding much to praise, the nonviolence precedes the truth, just like the teaching in yoga. Rotate your entire right leg out. Rotate your back foot in about 45 degrees. Extend your arms into a T position. Bend into your right knee. Keep your left leg straight. And then bend your right elbow, lower your right forearm onto the top of your right thigh and lift your top arm up. This is a modified Parsvo Konasana, a modified side angle pose. And so the idea as it relates to the practice on our mat, again, is that there are all of these different poses. And the priority is not coming into them at the expense of injury or harm. First, we protect ourselves. We practice this out on ourselves so that we can live it in our relationships with others. We use these modifications and they become part of our truth. One more inhale. Exhale, lift your torso up. Straighten your right leg and let's come into Uttita Trikonasana into triangle pose. Inhale, start to reach your right arm forward, lower your right hand onto your shin or your ankle, and then inhale, lift your top arm up. Few cycles of breath. And then inhale, lift your torso up, arms are out in that T position, lower your hands onto your hips, and then rotate your right leg to be parallel and foot to be parallel with your left leg and second side. Rotate your entire left leg out. Rotate your back foot in 45 degrees, arms out into a T position, inhale, lengthening up through your torso, exhale, bending into your left knee, lowering your left thigh down towards the ground, keeping your back foot anchored, and then bend your left elbow, lower your left forearm on top of your left thigh, and rotate your top arm up. You're in a modified Parsvo Konasana. Couple cycles of breath. And then inhale, bring your torso back up to center, straighten your left leg, heel toe your back foot in a few paces. And let's come into Uttita Trikonasana. Inhale, reaching your left arm forward, your hips go back, and then lower your left hand onto your shin or your ankle as you float your top arm up. Come into Triangle pose. Couple more cycles of breath. And we're using this modification. Traditionally, your left hand would be on the ground. For most of us, that's not accessible.
One more inhale and exhale. Inhale, lower your top hand to your top hip. Bring your torso up. Extend your arms out into that T position and then lower your hands onto your hips. Rotate your left foot in so that it's parallel with your right foot. Excellent job and step your feet together. Take your chair, bring it onto the mat, bring it towards the top of the mat. We're going to come into a, a, a one legged twist, but we're going to do it with a modification of the chair. So inhale, draw your right knee into your chest and immediately step your right foot onto the seat of the chair. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, lower your left hand to your right knee, and then reach your right arm towards the back of the room. And this is a modified hand to toe, one-legged twist. and you're rotating your left ribs over to the right. One more inhale and exhale. Right arm lifts back up, bring it down towards the front of the room and lower your right arm down and step your right foot off the seat of your chair. Second side, inhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot onto the seat of the chair. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, lower your right hand to your left knee. Inhale, lengthen up through the left side of your torso. And then as you exhale, start to lower your top arm towards the back of the room as you twist over to the left. Inhale, reaching up through the crown of your head and exhale, drawing your right ribs over to the left. One more cycle of breath. And then inhale, left arm comes up, bring it back down and step your left foot off the seat of the chair. We're gonna do it again. And you're gonna have your choice of using the chair or introducing the element of balance. And before you do that, I wanna offer one other piece of wisdom related to this idea of satya of truth. So we brought in Judaism with Hillel, Shammai, the bride. We talked about satya and the wisdom of yoga. And now I'm gonna bring in a piece of wisdom from the tradition of Sufi which is a form of Islamic mysticism. Welcome to your faith blender yoga today. And there's a suggestion in the tradition of Sufi to think of three things before you speak, that your words should pass through three different gates. At the first gate, ask yourself, is it true? At the second gate, ask, is it necessary? And then the third gate, ask, is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Those three questions are linked and totally relevant to this idea of reaching towards the truth. And the reason that I bring that up as we go into this pose one more time and you have the option of doing it with or without the chair is exactly these, these questions. So if you're somebody who struggles with balance or you're feeling off today or you have an injury, then is it necessary to do it with the balance? Is it kind to yourself to do it with the balance? Ask yourself those questions and keep your ego in check. 
So I'm going to demonstrate it without the chair, but you decide what you're going to do. So join me, inhale, just like before, draw your right knee into your chest. You're deciding if you're stepping your right foot onto the chair or not. Inhale, reach both arms up. Exhale, lower your left hand to your right knee. And then let your right arm reach towards the back of the room as you rotate your left ribs over to the right. Gonna be here for a few cycles of breath. And then inhale, right arm comes back up towards the ceiling. It comes down towards the front of the room. Release your left hand from your right knee. Lower your right arm down and then lower your right foot down. And just shake it off. Bend both of your knees, dance in place. And second side, shift the weight of your body onto your right foot. Draw your left knee into your chest. And if you're using the chair, step your left foot onto the seat of the chair. Keep your right hand on your left knee. Inhale, left arm comes up. And then lower your left arm towards the back of the room as you spin your right ribs over to the left. Take one more cycle of breath. And then left arm reaches back up towards the ceiling. Bring it down alongside your torso. Release your right hand from your left knee and then step your left foot down. Excellent, excellent job. And good job with our peak pose for the day. Coming back towards the top of your mat. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, folding forward. Bend your knees. Come into a squat. And then sit your tush down. Extend your legs out in front of you. Bend your right knee, plant your right foot on the ground, lower your right knee towards the right side of the room, press the sole of your right foot into the inner part of your left thigh. Start to rotate your torso so that it's aligned with your left leg. And then if you have a strap or a piece of rope, now is a good time to use it. If not, no problem at all. Inhale, arms lift up. Exhale, start to fold your torso forward. Let it hover above your left leg. If you're using a belt or a strap, grab onto it. Loop it over the ball of your left foot. And then bend your elbows out to either side to bring your torso closer to your left thigh. If you're not practicing with a belt or a strap, just lower your hands either onto your shin, your ankle, or your foot. Take a couple cycles of breath.
and then inhale, release your hand from the foot or your ankle, or your shin, float your arms up, and then exhale, lower your hands and extend your right leg forward. Second side, bend your left knee, plant your left foot on the ground, let your knee fall over to the left side of the room. Press the sole of your left foot into the inner part of your right thigh. And then rotate your torso so that it's aligned with your right leg. Inhale, arms lift up. Exhale, folding your torso down using your strap over the ball of your right foot. In which case, bend your elbows, let your elbows float out to the side as you lower your torso down towards your right thigh. Alternatively, just lower your hands onto your shin, your ankle, or your foot. A couple more cycles of breath. And then release your hands, bring your torso up and extend your left leg out towards the front of the room. We're gonna do one more forward fold, Paschimottanasana. So both your legs are extended straight. And again, you can use your strap or not. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, hinging at your hips. Loop the strap over the balls of your feet or let your hands rest on your feet, your ankles or your shins. You can bend your elbows, reach them out to opposite sides of the room. Couple cycles of breath. Inhale, bring your torso up. If you're using a strap, you can place that off to the side. Extend your arms in front of you and slowly lower down onto your back. Try to lower down one vertebra at a time. Engage your core. And then arms come alongside your torso, palms facing up. Let your ankles roll open. And you start to settle into your Shavasana, into your final resting pose. And as you settle into your Shavasana, I want to emphasize part one of our class today in this search for truth, which involves a recognition that truth is multidimensional. And does not come at the expense of harm first and foremost to ourselves. Release your spine onto the ground. Feel the weight of your body sinking into the mat. And resume a slow and steady cycle of breath.
Start to wiggle your toes and your fingers, bringing a little bit of life into your body. Draw your knees into your chest and pause. Lower your knees towards the right side of your mat and come onto the right side of your torso and pause. And then press both palms into the ground and push yourself up into a seated position, crossing your shins in Sukhasana. Have, one, have your hands stacked on top of your knees with your palms facing up. Let your eyes close. So as I often implore, one of the great gifts of claiming time for a yoga practice on the mat is this opportunity to turn our gaze in, work on ourselves for the purpose of being able to open our eyes, stand up and step into the world in relationship with other people. And again, there's so much honor in the truth that each one of us holds dear. And in order to coexist and to be in relationship with other people, we have to be very aware of how our truth stands in comparison to the truth of others. And the wisdom that we've covered today in Judaism, in the practice of yoga, in Islamic mysticism really instructs us that our truth should not come at the expense, at the harm of another person. And so our challenge is how do we hold on to our truth, perhaps even let our truth evolve while simultaneously honoring other people using our words, our expressions, our actions in a way that doesn't bring violence into the world. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Namaste, Shabbat Shalom.